Hello everyone, and welcome back to the human design Q and a series where I will be addressing one of your human design related questions in each video. But before we get into today's question, if you want a chance to get your specific question answered by me, all you have to do is follow me at crystal L Ferrero on Instagram and stay tuned for monthly announcements and stories where I will give you the chance to submit your questions. And with that said, welcome back, beautiful souls. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Crystal L Ferrero. I'm a human design teacher and coach and founder of the Human Design Academy. And I help people like yourselves understand your unique energetic blueprint through the human design system. So I'm really excited about today because we're going to be talking about a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. And this question comes from Fiza at fit with Fiza on Instagram, who asks for tips around creating a business as a projector while honoring your energy and not feeling like you have to hustle all hours of the day. And this question is so important for me to answer because this was really like my problem and my trouble and my struggle with being a projector when I first started my business, not in human design, but really when I got into the world of entrepreneurship and it's what opened the doors for me to really start experimenting with my human design. Because, you know, before I had my human design business, I was a business and brand coach and I was trying really, really hard to make everything work, doing all the things. I just really was led to this path of burnout. It was terrible. It gave me like the worst anxiety that I've had in my life. And so I had heard about human design like a couple months prior, but didn't really get into it because I thought it was like another personality test. Anyways, this is not going to be like a full entrepreneurship story. I'll probably do another video on that. But anyways, got back into human design. That's when I really started to like experiment with the tools and it was just so game changing for me as a projector entering the space. And yeah, that's really what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to give really like the five things. I'm not going to go like in too much detail. Cause like, I mean, I could go on forever really when it comes to creating a business as a projector, but I guess you can say like, I'm going to talk about the five things that were really key for me in terms of building my business as a projector so that I don't feel like I'm hustling all day and I don't have to work like all hours of the day. So yeah, let's just get into it. Of the five things that I'm gonna share with you today, they can really be split up into two categories. So the first category being more external, practical stuff that you can do as a projector so that you're not doing as much, but then also most importantly, the internal, you know, the, the more inner work type of stuff, because that is really going to be the key to make sure that you're not constantly operating in this space of fear and, you know, adding more things onto your plate. So it's a mix of both the internal and the external that are really going to help you create a business as a projector that allows you to honor your energy and that allows you to, you know, work as little as possible if that's something that you want to do, or at least work in a way that is, you know, not overwhelming and not chaotic and doesn't lead you to this path of burnout. So let's just dive into these. So my first tip is D clutter. I cannot stress enough about this. Like I know it sounds so simple, because it is basically what happens is that, you know, as we're operating our business, we again, tend to pick up all these different activities that we need to do. You know, we want to take on new projects. We want to do like all these marketing things, you know, we need to do this. We need to do that. And when we're not careful, we're left with like all these different things and it gets over overwhelming, right? So it becomes very important to regularly audit your business activities. Like where are you committing and investing all your energy in, in your business and really identify the essential activities that are actually bringing you forward and decluttering the rest. And, you know, this kind of goes back to the 80, 20 rule. I think it's also called like the Pareto rule. I could be wrong. If you want to write down what it actually is in the comments, that would be very helpful, but basically honor the 80, 20 rule. And, you know, as you're doing this audit, identify the, the 20% of the activities that you're doing that are going to give you 80% of the results. So really looking at those revenue generating activities, whether that's anything that's like client facing certain marketing activities, of course, like not all the marketing activities are actually revenue generating but 
really honing in on the stuff that's bringing you forward, that's bringing clients into your business and not things like exploring new email marketing systems and looking at new project management apps, fixing your website and designing like changing the colors on your Instagram and stuff like that. You know, like there are certain activities that we do that just add more clutter and don't actually bring us forward. At least like, you know, if you're a solopreneur, and you're the only one that's doing everything in your business, it becomes even more important to focus on this because you want to be efficient with your energy. You know, if you only have a certain amount of it and you don't have that sustainable energy to be doing all the things, it's important that you invest that energy that you do have into the things that are essential, into the things that are revenue generating, right? And so to add on to that, Again, as you're looking at that list of all the things that you're doing in your business. So what I actually do is a mind map. I actually have mine right here <laughs> and I went through a decluttering process. And actually I might, if you want me to do a video on how I did my recent decluttering, just uh, drop me a comment in the comments below. Um, but basically this is my like business mind map that I did. And that's kind of how I really identified where I was investing my time and energy. So I had like my organization in the middle and then just kind of branched it out into different categories categories and then the specific activities in each of the categories. So actually just to share with you, like the different categories I have or, you know, things like admin tech marketing and sales. And that includes like the YouTube content and Instagram. I also have product and service development. So anything that has to do with creating courses or services and also curriculum and, you know, creating the materials for that, anything to do with that stuff. And then of course, like my human design services and everything that has to do with serving my actual client, preparing for my readings, preparing for my coaching sessions. And then last but not least, like one of the biggest things is the human design Academy and everything that goes into the certification program that I run. Of course, like there's some other stuff, but just to give you some ideas of the different categories of like where all your energy is going, right? And so as you're going through that list, it's first of all, also identifying what's not in alignment. So like what drains and exhausts you? What do you actually enjoy? You know, one of the most important questions for me is what's my zone of genius? What do I actually want to continue to do more of? And then also identifying, you know, what's not in alignment to your authentic truth, right? And that goes down to the core even of what your business is all about. Are you actually aligned to your values? Like, is your business actually aligned to your values, to your vision and to really what brings you joy and fulfillment? Another question I would ask is, you know, what's redundant or what's not bringing in income and then doing your best to, again, like just bring awareness to anything that drains you, anything that's out of alignment and then kind of going from there. So once you've kind of identified those things that are not in alignment, that are just not even bringing you forward, they're not enjoyable, then do like declutter them, stop doing them or, you know, change it and change it to something that is actually going to be aligned for you and enjoyable for you. That is like the number one most important activity as a projector to really simplify and really only focus on the essential so that you're not like spending your energy on all these different things that are not bringing you forward that don't even bring you enjoyment for that matter. So really identifying the core of what's going to drive you forward and focusing your energy on those things. And so right now my business is at the point where I've really simplified everything. Like I do the bare minimum that will bring me forward energetically because I don't want to add all these different things when I feel like shit anyways, right? I like to find sustainable ways that will allow me to grow, but not like pressure me and drive me into the ground, which I'm going to get into like how I do that as well in the next tip. But just overall, when it comes to decluttering, like just as an example of one of the things that I've decluttered in the past and one of the areas that I had trouble with was in marketing, you know, where I guess like I was kind of following this advice that we need to be omnipresent and that we should be on multiple platforms. So here I was, you know, a solo entrepreneur focusing on, you know, trying to do Facebook, also Instagram and LinkedIn, which Mm, it's not my thing, but anyways, like LinkedIn and also like getting my website and my email marketing, like just doing all of those things at once, 
you know, trying to get them all in place and not even focusing on like the actual serving my clients and like providing value. So what I did when I realized that was I just cut out everything that I wasn't enjoying. Like I stopped doing Facebook. I stopped, <laughs> I stopped going on LinkedIn. What else did I do? I don't know. There were a couple of things that I decluttered at the time and I just focused on Instagram and then doing a podcast at the time and really just focusing on the core things. Of course, if you enjoy all those platforms and it doesn't stress you out, then by all means, like go ahead and do it. But just really identifying the things that you're just you know, spending a lot of energy on and not being productive with it, give yourself that permission to trust that it isn't right for you, to trust yourself to, to make that decision to like cut it out. And of course, cutting it out doesn't mean that you are never allowed to do it again. You can do that. You know, it's just about waiting for the right time when you have the right resources, when you feel aligned to it, when you have a purpose for it. And we're not just doing it for the sake of doing it because someone else told us to be omnipresent. All right, so this brings me to my next tip, and this is all about creating systems that allow you to do less in your business. So let's say, for example, you've done all the decluttering, you've identified the 20% of things, the 20% of activities that are gonna give you 80% of results. You know, you've identified the essential, the core of what makes your business, what is important and essential to your business. Next thing that we want to do is further simplify and further, first of all, automate and really create processes, repeatable processes so that you're not like kind of all over the place doing all these things and maybe even doing things that can be done by a machine or that can be done through automations, right? We try to find ways and systems that will allow you to take a step back from your business so that when you take a step back, things are still working in the background and you don't have to worry about showing up like every single day or you don't have to worry about, you know, certain emails not being sent out. And just kind of give you an example, like there are two main areas in my business that I really had to focus on. The first one was marketing. So before I was on YouTube, I was on Instagram and that was kind of like my core platform at first. And of course being on Instagram, I thought it was gonna save me time because I was only on one platform, but it actually created more stress and pressure to show up every single day because if I didn't show up, then, you know, I didn't have any visibility. I didn't have any like way of people seeing me in that sense. It's not a great platform for SEO currently. People say that's changing. I'm not sure if that's true, but basically with Instagram, it's like something that you kind of have to consistently be showing up for, which is one of the reasons why I decided to shift my, you know, my marketing and my outreach to YouTube and to bring that, no, actually I started a podcast first, but then that's also where YouTube um, comes in with my human design channel. You know, I'm able to leverage that SEO. And for anyone that doesn't know what SEO means, it means search engine optimization. It's basically anything like, I don't know, even like Google is an SEO platform, but just in terms of social media and marketing for business owners, YouTube is a great platform for SEO because when you put your content out there, it doesn't just like disappear after 24 hours, like on Instagram, it's something that is evergreen. I guess that's another good word to put it for it, but like, it's something that people are constantly on and searching for, right? So Right now, because I'm on YouTube, I actually get like 95% organic traffic from YouTube, which means that I can put a piece of content on there and it's still gonna continue to gain visibility. People are still gonna consume it even after that first like, you know, week that I post it. It doesn't just disappear into, into virtual neverland. Like, I, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it, but it's there for me, right? And again, like, I get 95% organic traffic on YouTube. Like that's quite a bit. And so I feel confident and I feel comfortable with taking that step back when I need to and really taking that break when I need to. And I'm not like pressured to create content on Instagram because when you feel that pressure, and at least for me personally, when I feel that pressure, it like really disrupts my creativity and it really makes it a lot harder. So this gives me that, that break. It gives me that space 
to, you know, if I don't want to show up on Instagram, I don't have to. But if I do feel inspired, which, you know, now that I have that space and it's less pressure, I have a lot more creativity because I'm not in that, you know, urgent state, that scarcity state all the time for not showing up. And yeah, just creating that system. This for me has been an amazing system for me to do less marketing and still get people, you know, coming in and still get my work in front of people and also build relationships with people without me having to go out there. You know, like I know there is a lot of social media advice that for first of all, like I do not resonate with that feels icky and weird for me. <laughs> like on Instagram, going out into the hashtags and like trying to find your ideal clients like that, especially as a projector does not work or <laughs> at least like it feels really, uh, and it's not the most like, efficient use of energy as a projector, which is why getting on an SEO platform as a form of marketing in the long term is really helpful. Also, I have referral systems in my business as well. So I'm not the one that has to go out there and do all the selling. My clients do that for me or like even the coaches that I've built relationships use me as a specialist in their business and refer their clients to me to do human design readings. I think another great way in terms of doing the marketing without having to do more is is repurposing content. So having some way to like not have to create things from scratch all the time. And then even collaborations, like things that are fun, right? Collaborating with people that are in similar industries and doing talks or podcast interviews. Like I did a lot of podcast interviews. That's how I got a lot of visibility without me having to like go out there and find these like individual people, right? People just found me as I started putting things out there, as I just did the things that I like to do, like my, you know, give human design readings and then get referrals that way. Kind of going on to the operational side of things, another thing that is really gonna help you save time is finding as many ways to automate as possible. So when it comes to like, email marketing, if you can automate those email sequences, that's really helpful. Having a booking system, so something like Calendly or Acuity in place where your clients can just find you and book directly with you, or even Dubsado if you're a coach, those are really great CRM, like customer relationship management processes where you're not doing all the admin stuff and you're not like having to manually create all these contracts and then manually send out all these contracts and then like, you know, send these all these emails back and forth. So finding different processes, like core processes that you do in your business and finding ways to automate them as much as possible. And then lastly, of course, if you're not like new in your business and you have the resources to really delegate a lot of activities, then just delegating. Like if there's certain things that are not in your zone of genius, but are still necessary to delegate those things. Like right now, I currently have two people kind of working on my team. I have an OBM and then I also have, well, newly hired OBM, but for a while I really just had like a VA who helped me with a lot of stuff like content creation for the Human Design Academy and also helping me create blueprints for my clients, right? So just finding little ways, like you don't have to start big, you don't have to hire an entire team, but working with the resources that you do have. And, you know, if you have that opportunity to delegate certain tasks to like a virtual assistant for maybe like activities that, you know, take up a bit of time for you that you would rather get that help with. So considering that as well. So my third tip is all about creating space and boundaries in your schedule and sticking to them. So I'm gonna share my experience around what that means for me, specifically like this kind of pertains more to coaches and service providers. So when it comes to boundaries, what that looks like for me is, you know, doing readings either only three days a week or even like the first two weeks of the month. So actually that's what I do right now. I only take readings three days a week and if like my bookings get to like a certain amount, I'll close my calendar for that month. Sometimes I'll either do either the first two weeks of the month as well and then, I'll, or the last two weeks of the month where I'll open up for readings. And then the other two weeks is really how I created space to do more like creative stuff and more learning and stuff like that, right? You know, when I first started my business, I was doing readings like almost every single day because I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna open up my calendar. And if I open up my calendar, then more people are gonna book and like all that kind of stuff. But it just made me miserable. So it's, you know, it was really important for me to set boundaries 
in my schedule and also like when I wasn't doing readings every single day, it created more space for me to be more productive and get other things done in my business that were equally, if not more important. One of the things that I also found like when I was doing readings more than three times a week or like three different days a week is that it would cut into my creative flow. It would cut into my like recovery time and I would just feel exhausted. So that's really what works for me. Only taking calls three days a week. My Monday is usually like my zero call day. I do not take any calls. It's just like a CEO day. It's a way that I get back into my business, do more like strategy and planning and envisioning and stuff like that. Wednesday is kind of like my learning day as well. So I have my spiritual coach that I work with. And then I also am currently studying for my breathwork certification. So Wednesday is reserved for my learning and my development. And like between that time, I'm kind of flexible. I can create or I can do more like self-studying and stuff like that. But I like to keep at least two days of the week flexible for me to do other stuff. Another boundary that I have in my schedule is that I only take late calls two nights a week. So because I live in the European time zone, I live in Barcelona, a lot of my clients are in the US, in Canada, like in the American time zones. And so in order to accommodate, I do like to have and offer certain spots late at night, like for Tuesdays, that's one of my late call nights. And then Thursdays is my late call night for the Human Design Academy. So I do my group coaching calls. Like I have a second session that's at 11 p.m. at night and I'm like, that's the thing I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to find that middle ground for now because you know, things change. Maybe one day I'll, I'll stop doing that and I'll have someone else do those later calls. But for now, that's what works to me. Like I can do these late calls once, twice max a week, but not more than that. And then lastly, of course, another boundary that is very important for me. And again, like this is flexible because sometimes I, I have like certain deadlines or like I, I enjoy creating. So my this boundary is basically weekends off i usually honor that like i would say 70 percent of the time but sometimes like i really do enjoy like the learning and 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 doing things and the idea is as long as i have like you know i'm not burnt out and i'm not forcing myself to do it then it's okay to sometimes like work on the weekends or like create that instagram post if i feel if i feel called to do it right but having boundaries in your schedule is very very important and not just like having it as a free for all. And even for me, the traditional time blocking doesn't work for me. That feels very restricting. So that's why it's really important to like create lots of space. So even if I have a big project or like a certain service that I want to launch, I'll literally book off my entire month so then I can dedicate myself to that process because I, I love that momentum and I love being like immersed and like being deep into something and not having it like cut up into these like little time blocks every single day because that becomes very draining for me. So reading space and boundaries in your schedule is life-changing. And so going back to creating space in your schedule, one of the, I guess you could say most life-changing pieces of advice that I got from Karen Curry Parker was to budget so that you can have these rest and creation periods and you don't feel suffocated or overwhelmed or guilty for not taking client calls like for a month, right? To really schedule and like budget so that you're able to take that time off and rest and recuperate, regenerate without feeling that guilt or that pressure, right? That has been really life-changing for me. That's something that I do. So again, like whenever I have a big project or if I wanna take a vacation, like I just block those things in advance and I don't feel guilty for these like rest and creation periods that I have. And so as I get to the last two tips, these ones are more on the internal side that are really, really important for you as a projector so that you're not in that constant state of fear and rushing, right? Again, like this is more so the inner work or like the spiritual, the physical work that we have to do so that we can feel good in our business and we're not constantly hustling. We're not constantly overwhelmed by the pressure. And so the fourth thing that I would recommend is building internal awareness you know, looking at your human design chart and understanding your pressure centers. So like the head and the root center, where is this pressure that you're feeling to do all these things, to hustle, to, you know, constantly be in this doing state, where is this coming from? You know, if you have a defined head center, then a lot of that 
pressure, you know, to know the answer to things or to like act on all these different ideas that comes from like internal stuff, right? If you have an undefined head center, then you might be like constantly inspired and feel all this pressure to like know all the answers. So understanding like what the source of pressure you're feeling is coming from, you know, looking at your root center as well, because that's the other pressure center. It's the pressure to do, to, to initiate, to take action on things. Right. And so whether it's defined or undefined, like understanding again, is this pressure internal? Is it external? Is it coming from outside of me? And either way, how do I deal with this pressure? One of the things that you should know about the pressure centers and how we deal with pressure is that it's just pressure. It's not a clear sign and it's not a sign that we actually need to act on these things. When to actually act on these things, this comes down to like your authority, your strategy and authority. And that's how you discern when it's the right time to act on something or if it's the right thing to act on, right? Another thing around like building that internal awareness is, you know, like what fears do you have around rest? What do you fear will happen if you take that step back? You know, do you feel guilty? And sometimes these fears are real. Like if you are struggling financially, right? Like sometimes these fears are real. So, you know, if you really need to get yourself in a financially sound place, that's something that I would always recommend to take care of first. You know, I went the typical line three route, the, the one three route, and I kind of went all in in my business. It was not good for my nervous system. Probably wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I honestly, going back, <laughs> I would probably have taken at least a full-time job because I am the breadwinner of my family. My husband was out of work. I wasn't you know, earning income yet when I first started my business and we have a daughter. So there was a lot of pressure on me at that time. And that affected my ability to show up in my business and it affected my ability to take care of myself because I feared that if I wasn't trying, then like, of course, we're not gonna get income and we're gonna find ourselves on the streets, which, at the same time, wasn't true because I did have like a cushion of savings and we also had a place to stay, like worst case scenario, you know, we didn't have to pay rent at that time. So it was kind of like, you know, really just identifying, first of all, what fears do you have around rest and identifying whether it's a real fear or if it's just like an irrational fear, right? And if it is a real fear, what do you need to do to get yourself out of that fear state, right? Like what kind of foundations do you need to have in place or how do you move yourself back into that internal safety? Another thing you might want to ask yourself is what's pushing you to overwork? Why do we not listen to our physical bodies? Like when enough is enough, right? Why are we not allowing ourselves to rest? So just really identifying the things like, why am I working? Why am I doing what I'm doing? What's pushing me to overwork, right? And then also like reminding yourself that in order to move forward, we need to pour from a filled cup, not an empty cup, right? That is what is gonna allow us to be more productive. That's what's gonna allow us to, first of all, spread energy that is not from this like tired and burnt out place because the energy that we have is going to be the energy that we project and that we give out and it's going to be likely the same kind of energy that we're going to receive back right so it's really important to take care of your energy in that way as well and so as you reflect on these different fears and beliefs that cause you to you know cause you to do 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 that cause you to feel guilty around rest doing what we can, especially around the specific irrational fears, like releasing them, right? Doing the mindset work around them so that these things don't get in our way, so that they don't, you know, push us to burn ourselves out and to make decisions from this urgency and scarcity mode, right? That lead us into situations where, you know, we end up regretting them and we end up totally bitter and burnt out, right? So it's really important to build that internal awareness so that you can create choice, you create options for yourself. And that's really, really important. And my last projector business tip is, again, I, I guess, I don't know if this is like internal or external, but it is also practical, but regulating your nervous system. Basically what I mean by that is getting yourself out of living in this constant survival mode, getting us out of that stress state, 
as an entrepreneur, especially when you're just starting your business, everything is new. You know, you're not familiar with a lot of the things in your business, you know, you're you're living in this constant state of uncertainty. And therefore, this triggers a response in our body. It triggers a stress response, right? And when we're living in this stressed state, you know, we feel a lot more anxious. We tend to burn out. We make decisions that are not in our best interest you know we are again like we're running in survival mode all of our decisions are based in this vibration of fear right and if you are familiar with like the map of consciousness and the emotional uh, vibrations fear is like one of the lower vibrations right and again like there's no good or bad vibration each vibration has its purpose but when you're operating from that fear vibration that's when things are a lot harder, right? So the idea is to elevate that, to get yourself out of that fear, that survival mode and get yourself into like a higher vibrational state so that you're not running on survival mode. You know, you're making those higher consciousness decisions and things get to be easier from this place. You get more clarity because really burnout and stress affects your mindset and it affects your performance when we're running on empty, when we're constantly in this stress state, you know, we stop ourselves from doing a lot of the things that we want to do because we don't feel safe doing them. And so it becomes really important to, again, like bring that internal safety into our bodies, you know, understanding that we are safe, we are here, we're present, we're in the now, right? And one of the most important things for me, especially, and like, this is something that I do to this day, but having different tools that I can rely on when I do get into this like flighty state or when I get into this fear kind of state. My go-to tools are breath work and really using breath as medicine. So when I need to either calm down and get into that rest and digest state, when I need to like get back into my body and like get out of my head and into my body, right? Meditation when it comes to clearing my head as well and clearing a lot of the pressure that comes up, right? It's really also helped me with my focus and like so many other things, but breath work, meditation, movement, like any kind of embodiment where you're really just getting back into your body when you regulate your nervous system, right? You can perform so much better as an entrepreneur. You make better decisions. You're not run by fear and you don't stop yourself and you don't get in your way half as much, right? So that is like the most important thing. I think this should be like the first tip, learning the tools to regulate your nervous system and not living in that chronic stress state because again, that can also lead to other physical illnesses, phantom illnesses, digestion problems. And when we have any of those things, it takes out more energy. You're left with less energy to actually operate your business. So learning to regulate your nervous system is absolutely key as a projector business owner. And actually as a business owner in general, like any type. Now that's all for today. I know I can go on and on and on about this topic, but I really hope that you enjoyed. And if you did find this helpful, I'd be so grateful if you could hit that like button and even share this video with anyone who might find this beneficial. And if you wanna learn more about the human design system and you love the human design Q and A, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and also follow me at Crystal Alferrero on Instagram. And anyways, that's all for today. I hope you have an amazing day, evening, night, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.